So, Coleman, did you know that life is a highway? No, not not really, no. Not especially. And and that I want to ride it all night long? Hmm, nope. That's, nope. And if you're going my way, I, don't, I want to ride it all night long. I What's just, the next I part? Just, I don't know. I don't know what you're getting at right now. <laughs> just kidding. I do, because we're doing cars this week. Cars! <laughs> Welcome to Afterthoughts, everybody. This is a podcast where we rewatch movies, we compare our first and second impressions of those movies, and discuss a related topic. My name is Joshua Kazemi, and I'm here with my co-host, Cole Taylor. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Good. Are you going to make fun of me every week? It's just, it's just, it just makes me laugh every week. <laughs> Whether you do <laughs> That's Me or something new, it makes me laugh. <laughs> that's just where we are. We'll, we'll get back to That's Me eventually. Just, just not for now. <laughs> As we said earlier, this week we are talking about 2006's Cars. Disney and Pixar's Cars. <laughs> We're not talking about planes? <laughs> no, never. Pixar's masterpiece? We are never, it's not Pixar, <laughs> first of all. There it is. You that's shut what that I was down. <laughs> it's not Pixar. <laughs> Uh, I love Pixar, and we're talking about cars. <sighs> wow. Don't give too much away, jeez. Yeah. I did, oh, no. Here's the thing. I could say anything right now about how I feel about cars, and it will not give away what I will say later, because this was a roller coaster for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, all up and down the track, if you will. <laughs> oh, I will. We'll get into it. Before we do that, though, before we get into it, pump the brakes. So many car puns. Before we get into it, why don't you take us through the plot of Cars? Yeah, I'll drive us through the plot. <laughs> You've got Lightning McQueen racing against uh, two others, the King and Chick something. Sure. Something or other. Um, and they have a three-way tie by all these crazy odds and Lightning McQueen taking huge chances and blowing out two of his back tires. So, since there's a three-way tie between them, they decided that they'll have a follow-up race later and to see who is actually the winner. And on the way to the new race, Lightning McQueen gets lost, falls out of his truck, and ends up in Radiator Springs. And he's all angry because he was trying to make it there to schmoozy up with some of the sponsors he could potentially have specifically dynaco which is a classic classic pixar brand mm -hmm. and but so he's angry that he's stuck in this town and he ends up destroying the road which is only kind of his fault but we'll get into that and um so he is sentenced to repair this road and cannot leave until the road is repaired and he's even more angry because now he knows he's going to be really late and so he's fixing this road while trying to deal with these, uh, what he calls hillbillies and is just stuck in this town trying to get out and slowly over time, you know, kind of ends up liking it a little bit and is kind of torn between his old and new world and it doesn't, doesn't know really what to do and just gets to know these people and you know, the, the plot goes from there. What, what's, how does he feel about the piston cup after all, which is what he wins if he wins the race. <laughs> That's, I didn't really know where to end that one, so that's a weird spot go. to end on. But there you go. That's it. Yep. That's Cars. <laughs> that's Cars. Did you see this when it first came out? I did. I don't remember if I saw it in theaters, but if not, it would have been shortly after. Uh -huh. I do not think I was ever super excited to just go see this movie, so that's why I don't think I saw it in theaters, but I definitely saw it. It had to have been in 06, maybe 07. Yeah. I'm guessing you saw it as soon as it came out. <laughs> I love Pixar. Uh, Toy Story <laughs> is my favorite movie, and I really love Pixar, just in general. And so I watched them all as they were coming out, and I loved each and every one of them, and they just continually blew me away. And then Cars came out, and I didn't love it. I didn't hate it either. It just was like, it was, it was a bummer to compare it to the other Cars, or the other Pixar movies, obviously, because it's just not as great. And it's fine, but I never loved it. I think for a long time, I wanted to. 
especially before the sequel came out, because really Cars was like the only dud up until maybe Brave. Brave is sort of debatable. I'm getting into the topic time. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I'll save some of that for then. But so I just never understood what made this world interesting. And all the other Pixar worlds are very interesting worlds. And I just didn't like this one as much. The story is fine, but it's kind of just that. It's not great. And Pixar is sort of the best at creating these awesome stories. And so when that falls short, it kind of just, you know, it's fine. But if it wasn't Pixar, I think it would be forgettable. Like, we wouldn't be talking about this movie if it wasn't associated with a great brand like Pixar. Uh, There are still some great things about it. I think the animation is, or I thought the animation was awesome and really beautiful, aside from the cars themselves. (laughs) Like, everything else is really nice looking. Um, but yeah, my, to boil down my first impression, I thought it was fine and that's kind of it. Yeah. I agree on the aesthetics of it. It definitely looked like a Pixar movie and was wonderfully made in that aspect. But I also just did not ever care about this movie before watching it, after watching it. Yeah. I remember anytime anyone suggesting watching Cars, I just was like, ugh. Cars? (laughs) Cars? <laughs> like, out of every Pixar movie you could pick, you want to watch Cars? Yeah. There's just something about it that doesn't entice me as much as the other ones. And it's always been that way. Yeah. And I think part of it is the fact that they are Cars. I yep. think that, in and of itself, turned, has always just turned me off. Yeah, yeah, Even really. when I first watched it. I don't know why. I don't know if it's because that has just been played out in, like... Just it make it reminds me of I think it was Shell no I don't Chevron I think I'm really wrong on that Chevron there we yep. go you know the the like talking cars and that and yep. I just put like it reminds me of that and I don't know it just seems so cheesy and it's just such a strange world to be in yes. that everything is cars people are cars animals are cars everything's cars bugs. it's just we- it, bugs are cars oh yes <laughs> bugs are bugs though so that's kind Stupid. of funny. But yes, it's weird that bugs are cars. It's, I don't know. And that has always just kind of off put me more mm-hmm. than any other Pixar thing. Mm-hmm. Like toys being alive, cool, bugs, fine, cars, weird. Yes. And one thing that's always kind of sort of perplexed me is that this is maybe one of the most popular Pixar movies with kids. Kids love cars. Like I would say more so than a lot of the other Pixar movies or franchises. For whatever reason, Cars is insanely popular. And Cars Land at Disney World, or Disneyland, I mean, is 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 always populated with children. It, it, everyone, they just love this movie, and I don't really understand why. Like, maybe it's a little more well, accessible than the others, but it's just odd to me that the, sort of, like, the weakest Pixar franchise is the most popular. To that last point, though, isn't every part of Disneyland highly populated with kids? Just saying. <laughs> I mean, isn't it a kid's theme park? Good point. (laughs) (laughs) But I do know what you mean. They they are definitely obsessed with cars more than I would say other Pixar movies. Yeah. And I think that's just a, I think that's just a marketing thing. It's just such an easy thing to market. Like, here's a car. Like, we can make it into a toy too. And toys are already toys, but they're real. That's kind of out there. And other (laughs) Pixar movies are, I think are harder to market to kids than just cars. Yeah. Cars. Yeah. But, yeah, it's weird. It's weird for sure that it's both of our, like, lower totem pole of the Pixar franchise. Is it, that's not right. Pixar movies. <laughs> and <Yeah>. – <laughs> but children love it for whatever reason, an audacious amount. <laughs> Anything else to say for your first impression of Cars? Nah, that's kind of it. Good, not great. I would say good, not great, but still just because of what it was even less than good for me. Like I would (laughs) I would say it's a good movie, but still I didn't like it hardly at all Mm -hmm. just because of what it was. So what did you anticipate for the rewatch? Oh, just what I always anticipate watching this movie (laughs) to just not like it some more. (laughs) What did you anticipate? I I (laughs) I wasn't sure. I uh Because I've never sat down to watch this movie to, like, analyze it, you know? It was just, like, it was such sort of a bummer 
to know that there was a Pixar movie out there that wasn't as good as the others for such a long time that I never sat down and was like, I want to figure out what doesn't work. So I've never really watched it with a critical eye, and I didn't really know how it was going to hold up under that scrutiny. So, yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. Well, should we uh, go into uh, what it is? Yeah, let's do it. Second impression. Seconds. Well, what would... What do you think? Well, <laughs> this is the part of the podcast where we go on a little a little journey, I guess. <laughs> Which is fitting for this movie. Um, so, I have a long list of things in my notes of things that I don't like. Reasons why this movie doesn't work. <laughs> and reasons why I feel like it's, it's, it's not as superior as the other picture entries. Like, literally, like, really specific things. A long list of things that we can get into. But... So this weird thing started to happen to me as I as as the movie was wrapping up. Like once we got into the third act, I was like, "What is this? What's happening to me?" And I just kept feeling <laughs> like, "Why is this?" Like I don't understand. I didn't understand how we got to this point, and so I was very confused. And just like I feel these emotions, and <laughs> and this is like really sweet. And and even though it's so cheesy, oh, it's happening. And then when Lightning McQueen pushes the king over the finish line. I teared up. <laughs> I was like, how is oh this happening? My God. What's happening? <laughs> I don't get it. I just like that you're like, what's happening to me? Because <laughs> they didn't they didn't earn it. It just happens. <laughs> and, and it is emotional. And it's just like, oh my gosh, this is such a sweet movie. Uh, and so I, at the end of it, I was just like, I don't understand what just happened to me. This is such a weird thing. Because I have all these things that don't make sense. And then all of a sudden... The ending is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so we can get into specifics of all those things. Uh but that's that's me. <laughs> what did you think? <laughs> I still don't like it very much, but I kind of mine is similar to yours, not I didn't tear up, you big baby. But <laughs> but to summarize it, pretty much I think the part I don't like of the movie is the second act, like Radiator Springs. Mm. How, just just how it is. And we can get into more specifics, but that part at the end as well, like I enjoyed that part. I enjoyed him pushing the king across and how that plays out and how it ends. But again, I, yes, I, this still isn't my anywhere near one of my favorite Pixar entries, and it's still... I would say it's still my least favorite Pixar movie. Mm-hmm. But yes, the ending and the beginning, just how it begins and ends, where the diff, how Lightning McQueen ends up, because you can see how different he is from the first act and the third act is fantastic. But how it happens. <laughs> so let's, let's get into specifics. What, what What's some of your lists? What's some of your things? The biggest thing by far is that the world doesn't make any sense and I don't like it. <laughs> 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 yep. It's just the the other Pixar worlds are so interesting all on their own. Like they the way that they're they they are so good at world building and we get to see the world from different points of view. That's what makes every other Pixar movie so interesting. But this is just a human world without humans and it's dumb. <laughs> the fact that they're all cars in a human world is so not interesting to me. It's just it just feels kind of lazy. No. Like and and things like how come the tractors are animals? Why, I know. Why, that, why, yeah. Why are the bugs bugs? Like it just it, it it all feels like a kids movie and not like a good Pixar movie. Like they're always such a a step above just the minimum amount of work you have to do to make a kids movie. They they're making great movies that are that are great for everyone, but this is like no, we're going to take a step back and make a a kids movie. What's another one? Um, keep going. If you've got a long list, you can just <laughs> rail them off. I don't know which one to say. It's just, it's also <laughs> like, it's 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 well written enough, I think. Like, the beats mm-hmm. are good, the characters are good, but there's no subtlety. Oh, yeah. It's all just right there on the page, the, exactly the way you would expect it to be. And things turn out exactly the way you think they would. I, I would yeah. say the only thing I wouldn't have anticipated maybe the first time I watched it was that he stops at the end of the race and pushes King over, across the line. Like, that's the only thing that maybe is a little bit of a surprise. But even the fact that, like, yeah. the Hudson Hornet shows up in California at the end is like, yeah, yeah, that's what you would expect. So it's 
you know, and there's lots of jokes, lots of attempts at humor, but the script I don't think is just as clever or as subtle as it should be. Everything sort of just lands exactly the way you would expect it to. But question real quick. Speaking of the Hudson Hornet getting like becoming his crew chief, how did they let all those people in and then <laughs> let him be Lightning McQueen's <laughs> crew chief? Didn't they just think that they held him hostage for like a week or however long? Yeah. And then they're just going to be like, no, I'm his crew chief. Oh, yeah. Come on in. Right. Just right. use your headset. And you can. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also because they don't recognize him as the Hudson Hornet until like a couple laps in. Right. Exactly. So, yeah. But just to go on with like the my main, my biggest thing with the movie. So I love the themes of the movie. I have come to realize that I love what they're trying to teach. That winning's not everything. Yeah. That like you're going to try and keep like what um so what Sally was saying, she had all these things and then it just never like fulfilled her. She was never happy or whatever. So she like went to Radiator Springs and just how you try and get all of these things and you think they'll make you happy. But really, like the Hudson Horton it said, it's just an empty – the piston cup's just an empty cup and just mm-hmm. – like nothing will ever satisfy you like you think it will as hard as you try. You'll just want more and more and that she just found this happy life in Radiator Springs. But – Ugh. My biggest thing with the movie is that I find Radiator Springs so boring. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that part of the movie, there's cool things there and building his relationship with Mater and building his relationship with those cars is cool to see. But it's just such a boring time of the movie and it takes up so much time. It's like they're trying to show me – they're trying to represent what – it can be like if you're not chasing these big things, just slowing down and not living in the fast lane anymore and that you're not going to find satisfaction in the fast lane anyways. And then I just find what they're trying to show me as better as so boring. Like I'm not exactly thrilled in that time. It's not, it's not fun, I guess. Yeah. While the actually good parts of the movie are seeing him in the beginning and in, and in the end, how he's changed. It's just that middle portion where he does change that it's just like, eh, but it's boring. Like I'm bored right now. I'm not as enticed by this movie. Yeah. It's this weird, this weird cross between like, I, I do, I, I do really like the moment where Sally takes lightning on the drive and then she explains route 66 and how it, 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 it like bypassed radiator Springs. And we get a little mm-hmm. bit of a flashback of what, Radiator Springs used to be like. So it's this cross between like something that we never experienced, something that Lightning never experienced, how how great and awesome Radiator Springs was, and then now how sad it is that no one visits it anymore. So it is kind of weird to to show Lightning McQueen what it's like to live life out like not in the fast lane, but through a town that is not what it used to be either. So I don't even no. know, like, should should Radiator Springs have still been this great, booming, small little town where he could have had fun or whatever? It's just kind of, I feel like it's 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 a little bit of a mixed message, or at least a mixed execution on this idea, which I also like. It, but, because uh, I just saw, it's so difficult to just explain, because it's not, it's just what he does there is so... Like, I think you could have put more (laughs) exciting things in there. And you're right. There are good parts in there. I do like the drive as well. And like I mentioned, like building the relationships and showing lightning change. But that's like it. I don't. When I watch other Pixar movies, the second act always has a bunch of things going on. And they're I'm more invested in what's happening. And there's higher stakes while this is just like slow down a little bit. Yeah. And Lightning McQueen learns to slow down. And that's it. That, like, sums up the second act. Yeah. But it just happens over such a long time with some cool intermittent parts, but that's it. It doesn't, it doesn't, there's not enough for it to be great, that mm-hmm. second act to be great for me. Mm-hmm. And this, this movie is longer than most Pixar movies, at least up until this point. And so mm. to slow down in that second act, you really do feel it with the extra length. And I guess it's like, I don't know. So even though the fact that the movie is trying to communicate to Lightning that he should slow down and then the movie does slow down, it still is like not enough for you to like make that sort of interesting. Uh, I mean, no. I I think it is also because of the length. Like, yeah, you're showing me he can slow down, but you don't have to slow down this whole movie with how long it is as well. 
just to like make me understand that Lightning McQueen needs to slow down because he also doesn't literally need to slow down. He just needs to stop going after the things he's going after. And I think you can show me that in less time with more interesting things. Mm. And the fact I mentioned this in my first impression and you mentioned in your second, the fact that they're all cars just still turns me off. Yeah. It's just not an interesting world. And I, I want it to be, I think I would be more invested in it if, if I was invested in the world and it's just, I just, it, in the back of my head, it's just like over and over again, like, well, what makes this world exist like it doesn't none of it makes any sense and so i don't buy the conceit and so even though the story does work on some level and the characters are working it's it, it's just like that that first step i still haven't taken i'm still right back at the start going what cars what <laughs> <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> so i don't know the visuals are still amazing it's i think the visuals are the strongest part of the movie it looks awesome yeah for sure. Aside from the cars. <laughs> <laughs> Who look like cartoon yeah. characters. And truly, the way they tie it all up at the end really is cool. For him to compare what is happening to the king to what happened to Doc and just not wanting to like perpetuate that. Yeah. Really is cool. And it's it really... I do enjoy watching Lightning McQueen change over the course of the movie. But mm-hmm. I don't know. I think that's the movie's... Other than the aesthetics, that's the movie's best quality. Mm-hmm. It's just that I think they could have done it in less time and more interestingly. <laughs> I think <laughs> the, genuinely when they have that, him and Sally have that drive, I think that could have been him learning to slow down right there. That could have communicated all of it. But oh, instead yeah. we have this whole chunk of the movie dedicated to, hey, s- lightning, slow down, slow down, just take it slow. <laughs> i don't know and that's that's something that perplexed me even more this time around is i don't understand why kids love this movie so much and maybe it really is just the marketing <laughs> but like does this really hold a kid's attention i need to sit down and watch it with a child because i've never i don't think i've ever done that it's a, like a, it's almost two hours long and the bulk of the movie is about slowing down and appreciating what's around you does that really communicate well to a child do they identify with that on some level <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like, will it really hold their attention? I'm not sure. But it, they love I bet it. So. You Mater holds their attention. Yeah. Do you like Mater? I don't like Mater. <laughs> oh, that's messed up. <laughs> Do you like Mater? <laughs> I like him. I think he's got his moments. I like. I like his role in the movie, and I think he's a very sweet character. I don't find him funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's one of his like purposes in the movie, other than yes, hitting lightning's heartstrings. You just don't, you don't, no, not about that. No, yeah, I think some of his jokes definitely don't miss, De- <laughs> definitely miss. Yeah. But I think there are some that are good, and I could see why a kid would really enjoy Mater. Yeah, and that, I think that makes I sense. think his jokes are on a kid's like <laughs> specifically. Like, aim towards kids. Yeah. Well, anything else about this movie? <laughs> well, I'm wondering now where Car sort of falls for you in the Pixar scheme of things. Oh, it's still at the bottom. I think I said that. <laughs> okay. Just, which still, I mean, it's hard to say, but just because Pixar is so great. So even yep. being at the bottom, you're still way above so many other movies in existence. <laughs> you're just at the bottom of Pixar. Yeah. Right there with Wally. <laughs> dare you (laughs) (laughs) i said that one just for you golly i think uh (laughs) for me um i i think this is above like obviously above cars too and yeah well i'm i'm putting all of cars in one in one bucket i'm i'm curious as for cars three because it looks interesting but like i said i think we talked about the trailer a while back a couple episodes ago he learns the, the, that, that lesson in this first movie that winning is not everything so it seems like just a retread another great car pun um <laughs> <laughs> you and your car puns <laughs> but anyways um i think cars is, is better than cars 2 it might be better than cars 3 we'll see but i also think that cars is probably better than brave with this oh, rewatch i feel yes. like i like cars more than i like brave I would have to rewatch Brave to find that. Yeah, out. and it's it, may, it might be a similar thing. Like all the other Pixar movies are these great, interesting worlds that we don't get to experience. And Brave is about a bunch of humans, 
And it didn't make me feel emotional in the way that this movie on this rewatch did. So I feel like no. with this rewatch, I'm more confident in Cars being better than Brave. Yeah. And Cars 1, probably better than Finding Nemo 2. Or, I'm sorry, Finding Dory. Finding Dory? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> so if we if Pixar keeps generating these sequels and, and sort of lesser movies like Brave, I think Cars eventually will sort of be in the middle. <laughs> we'll see. Should I read off the Cars uh, Twitter poll? Absolutely. All right. So Cars, dot, dot, dot. Three options. The best Pixar film about Cars is the first option. Oh my gosh. <laughs> the second option is where are all the humans? <laughs> and the third option is good duck great. <laughs> so 30% of people said good not great. That's fair. Another 30% said best Pixar film about cars. <laughs> <laughs> and 40% asked where are all the humans? <laughs> <laughs> nice. But, you know, I think a valid response to that movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh, boy. <laughs> well. Topic time. Topic time. Let's do it. This week we're talking about Pixar. It's going to be a big conversation about Pixar. <laughs> 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 let's, let's start real fast with, like, what's your favorite Pixar movie? Ooh, favorite. Man, that is tough. <laughs> Right at this exact very moment, I'm going to say Inside Out. Wow. That's a great one. It is really good. But subject to change. Yeah. Just because, oh, because they're so good. There's so many. I mean, I could rewatch. I wouldn't, like, if I rewatched all three Toy Story movies, it could be Toy Story. Yeah. Those are great Because you got Toy Story up there, you got Up, and you got Inside Out. You got a bunch way up there. But even, like, but I, Ratatouille for, or The Incredibles or Monsters, Inc., they're all so good. All so good. But I'm going to say Inside Out for this very moment. I respect that. We're just going to skip right <laughs> over yours because we uh. don't know. Let's go. What's yours? We already I mean, know. Yes, it's Toy Story. Ha ha ha. It's Toy Story. <laughs> um, but it's interesting. Like if if someone who had never seen a Pixar movie and I was like, and they asked me to pick out the best one for them to watch and experience. I don't know if, if I would pick Toy Story. I mean, maybe I would because it's the first and it's great. And I do think it would convey that. But I think Pixar has achieved a lot of amazing things since then. And I would think about maybe Inside Out or Up or WALL-E to show them. Because I think, man, I think those three movies really are incredible. And like almost transcend just the genre of movies. that The computer animated kids movie, those three I think are top tier. Which also you just picked the three, three that are standalone movies. Yeah. None of them have sequels. Yeah. So Toy Story is amazing, but I think it's boosted by the fact that it's had so many great sequels. Yeah. And seeing True. just one isn't enough. You'd need to see the next two. Like seeing one is enough, but you would want them to see the next two just to know how good it is. Well, if you just show them Up or Wally -E or Inside Out, you get you get it right there. Like this is the movie. This is what they can show you in just this one movie without any additional sequels yeah yet that's a good point i don't know if they will but yep and as you were saying that i i did forget that there is a prequel to monsters inc <laughs> yep <laughs> which i would also put cars above <laughs> so interesting it's funny it's a funny movie but i think cars is be probably better which is yeah. so weird to say right that cars is better than anything is weird to say <laughs> It's true. <laughs> but only when comparing to other Pixar movies. There's a lot of movies you could say that Cars is better. Yeah, probably. Like, we just did The Mummy last week. What's better? <laughs> Cars is probably better than The Mummy. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Also, I didn't mention this in the earlier, but I did watch Cars on the way to California, like on a trip. So maybe that yeah. added to it. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> the experience. You should you know? have watched Planes too. Uh, uh, Not Planes too, but like Planes also. For I feel should we explain that? Do people know that that there are two Planes movies like created in the same style as Cars, but they're not created by Pixar. But so many people think they're created by Pixar, which well, is so I mean, sad. That is, that's that is genuinely confusing, though. You don't just yeah. take Toy Story and then create a spinoff only made by disney it that is 
it is astoundingly confusing that it they've is. made a planes movie. And I think Disney it was intentional on movie. Disney's part and not Pixar's part. Like Disney was like, people will think that it's part of that same world. And it kind of is part of the same world. And people will think that maybe it's Pixar. And it's sort of intentionally confusing. Like like how there's that entire studio that that intentionally banks on confusion and like will make a movie called Transmorphers. <laughs> <laughs> so that you think it's Transformers and you accidentally rent Transmorphers. <laughs> same kind of That's thing. Awesome. <laughs> but isn't Planes is set in the same unit? It has to be, right? I guess so. I've never seen them. I don't know if there's any sort of connection beyond the fact that they are just in the same world. But it also just. I, but just <sighs> even. I've seen like bits of it. I don't remember why it was on somewhere. And I saw like one scene from Planes. And they were like in this big either cabin or loft or something. And they were just. Hanging out like people do, but they were all planes and cars and stuff. So I still – I think it is set in the same world because they do exactly the same things. Okay. But it also – like it just – it peeves me more about this world because now it's not just cars. It's planes. And are there boats? Like what is – is it just anything that that transport humans is alive? But guess what? There are no humans. Therefore, there's no reason that there would need to be any transportation vehicles. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> You're just making oh, it worse awesome. by expanding upon it. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, and I just kept thinking, like, so they're cars and they're racing. So is this like their track and field? <laughs> I, don't, I don't get it. Of course. <laughs> so I once heard, and I don't know if this is true, but I heard that Pixar asks one question before they make a movie and that's if what if blank had feelings have you ever heard that i have heard that yeah is that do you think that's true i think on some level i don't i don't think it's maybe like the end all sort I don't of think it's, thing or the catalyst yeah, i don't think it's the rule but yeah but i, I definitely I have heard a that. lot of their movies it's also a pretty popular meme because like when inside out came out it was like what if feelings have feelings like, yeah <laughs> i don't know if they <laughs> said that <laughs> i know <laughs> That'd be hilarious though if someone did that. If that really was the rule though, and then someone's like, "Wait, what are you saying, guys? I got an idea." What feeling said feelings? <laughs> I would like to sit in that meeting. That would be a yeah, fun meeting. Be a funny one. It is interesting how even if that's not true, that's just like what Pixar does though. They take these either inanimate things or things you don't usually associate feelings with, and then give them feelings and bring them so much life. I do yeah. find that interesting. Yeah. That's what's so great about their 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 sort of brand of storytelling and their world building. And that's why Cars feels so much weaker than the others. Because in that sense, mm. it sort of does not succeed on the same kind of level. So then what is your least favorite if it's not Cars? What's bottom of the totem pole? Last. <laughs> Dead last. I mean, it's probably Cars 2. Cars 2, I think, is the only legitimate bad movie. Mm. let's put car let's put them all in one bucket okay let's let's forget cars <laughs> at all okay if, if that's what we're doing for all the sequels because if it's not cars 2 then it's probably monsters university that's fair and if it's not monsters university i don't know uh, brave <laughs> brave the good dinosaur was fine good dinosaur was great you shut your <laughs> mouth it's yeah it's probably one of those do you think they're next up and coming one's gonna be good well i wanted to bring that up there's four that are announced with dates and we can go through them let's do it the next one is coco though right no cars 3 is coming out this week oh i forgot that's like <laughs> that doesn't count that's like nick that's this week yeah june 16th cars 3 here we go um and then coco is in november and then in 2018 we get the incredibles 2 that's written and directed by brad bird the original, so that's probably fine. And uh, <laughs> Toy Story Four is coming out twenty nineteen, which Toy still Story 4. I which forgot still hurts. About that. It still hurts. I forgot about that. That does you know, hurt. It's it makes me really sad. <laughs> I know. Uh, okay, but of those four, any that you're excited about? Uh, I mean, I'm naturally drawn to Coco because. All the others are sequels. Yep. I mean, I wish they would stop doing that, honestly. <laughs> I get that it's easy to make a sequel and easier to get people in. You have established characters, so making it's going to be easier. And then yeah. people are already used to it. But I, I'm tired of it. Mm -hmm. I liked when Pixar just made a new movie every time. Yep. 
Me too. Also, when you're going to Toy Story 4, it, you're clearly in it for the money at that point. Yeah, Toy Story 3 had a bow on it. Had a bow. It was perfect. It was done. And the if thing, you want to make little side adventures, make tiny, short. Keep making those short little ones. Yeah, those shorts Mini are great. Episodes. I really do like yes. those. They should keep. I don't doing need those. a whole nother feature length <laughs> movie. No, nobody does. I'm. I mean, I'm kind of. I, it's a kind of thing where, like, the fact that it exists has the bar set so low for it. No one anticipates that it's going to be good. That maybe it'll be awesome because of that. But that's a Wait, long, long think, shot. See, I don't think. I don't think it, that still doesn't set the bar low for me because the only thing that's stopping it in my mind is the fact that three ended so well. I still yeah. don't think Pixar is going to mistreat their characters or make a terrible movie. I'm just uh, I'm just upset that it is happening, I guess. I still don't think the movie itself will be that bad. Yeah. I just wish they had stopped when they stopped rather than kept going. It is it is directed by John Lasseter. He's coming back to direct the fourth one, which is you know I mean, I mean, interesting. Fine. If they're gonna if they're gonna decide to make it, I hope he would come back. The, the one thing that has sort of given me a little bit of hope for the studio in terms of like them just tr- cranking out all these sequels now is that I I keep thinking like well maybe it'll give them more time to put out unique and original movies like. Between The Good Dinosaur and Inside Out, which were both 2015, the next original was two years later with Coco. So so maybe the sequels give them a little bit of a buffer time to create more original movies. But right now, there's only one announced. And there's movies, you know, set until 2019. So who knows when the next original will come. But maybe because of all these sequels, they will have had more time. Yeah. Are you excited for Incredibles 2? Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say excited. Okay. I'm, skeptical. <laughs> I, I wouldn't even say skeptical. I'm just not like Incredibles could have ended where it was too, and I'd be fine. I'm not. I'm not as disappointed as I am about Toy Story Four. Yeah, because that's ridiculous. Like, if you want to make an Incredibles movie this many years later, it, I would. That's fine. Well, that's the thing I was going to ask. There's there's what? a there's a big group of people I think that feel like Incredibles Two is too late. Like, not to say that they can't make the movie, but that it should have come out much earlier. Uh, I mean, I always think sequels should have come out earlier. I think it's weird when you come out years later, but they keep doing that. Tron Legacy came out years later. (laughs) Yeah. Not to say that (laughs) Tron Legacy is a masterpiece or anything, but Eh. making sequels years later isn't unheard of. Right. And I, in this case, I'm fine with it definitely because Brad Bird... Brad Bird came in with the idea for The Incredibles. It was like the first non-in-house story for Pixar to make. It was his idea. And he went off to do some live-action movies for a while. And the fact that he's coming back to do it, I think, is great. Like, they didn't want to do it again without Brad. And so I appreciate that they sort of waited for him to come back when he was ready to do it. I don't know. I don't think waiting too long to make a sequel is ever anything. I just depend... I think it honestly depends on if it's a good movie or not. Mm -hmm. I mean, Star Wars is going on forever at this point. (laughs) <laughs> are you excited for incredibles too yeah yeah I, I am that now that you know that brad is doing it for sure what are you most ex- are you most excited about coco as well yes yeah i would love it if they only did originals i don't i don't i don't need a sequel for any of these movies <laughs> no no me either <laughs> I, I can't think of one specific pixar movie that i would like a sequel for like maybe brave just as an attempt to redeem that franchise in my eyes i guess it's not terrible but maybe a sequel would make me like the whole world a little bit better if it was better i don't know you know what i'd be interested to Mm. see if disney started creating like better quality movies than pixar not all the time but just like enough because they've recently come out with big hero six zootopia other mm-hmm. movies in the their recent are really really good right and then pixar keeps putting out these sequels not to say that the sequels are bad but uh, yeah, no it is interesting. They, some of them are bad the finding dory isn't as good and monsters university wasn't as good and now they're putting out more sequels it would be interesting to see disney start cons- like consistently producing higher quality movies than pixar it's it was it was, it was definitely interesting when when Disney bought Pixar there was this shift because John Lasseter then became pretty much in charge of both like he's the chief creative officer at Disney so he oversees 
Disney and Pixar. And oftentimes, like, he's an executive producer for, like, Moana and Wreck-It Ralph and all those movies. And so I feel like it has been interesting to see the Disney movies get better and the Pixar movies create more sequels. But, unfortunately, I feel like Disney is right on the same track because they just announced Wreck-It Ralph 2 and Frozen 2. So we might just be on the same similar path. Oh, come on. Someone tell him to stop making sequels. (laughs) I mean, if they, I guess if they make money, whatever. Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, well. I think we've talked this topping of the ground. Still love Pixar. I'm yep. sure I'll still see plenty of those sequels. I'm a sucker. What can I say? And it's like the fact that they keep going on and the movies maybe aren't as good as they once were, or at least on this incredible role that they were on for such a long time, it doesn't negate the fact that, that the first like 11 movies are amazing. <laughs> yeah. Just like back to back, sure. all incredible. They don't st- cease existing. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can hope to hope. Mm-hmm. I think that's it, though. Yeah, that's the show. That's the show. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. We really appreciate it. If you want to continue to support the podcast, it'd be great if you could share this show with a friend. Send it along to them and let them uh, listen to it and then have them share it with one of your other uh, mutual friends, whatever. Uh, (laughs) You can uh, (laughs) tweet at us. Our Twitter handles are in the description. You can use the hashtag AfterThoughtsPodcast. Next week, we are talking about Transformers, the original 2007 so check that out. <laughs> let us know what you think of Transformers. Or let us know what you think of Cars. And uh, send us uh, those tweets. That'd be great. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it, right? <laughs> I think that's it. Thanks for listening, everybody. See y'all. See ya. See ya.